Good morning. And welcome to the First Congregational Church of Woodstock. Whoever you are, wherever you find yourself on your life or spiritual journey, you are welcome here. And a special welcome to those who are joining us online. Whenever you may be tuning in, may you have a joyful, wonderful worship celebration. pray. Blessed Lord, you have given us holy scriptures for our learning. Grant us ears to hear them, that we may be inwardly renewed and outwardly thy servants in the world. Amen. We have two scripture readings this morning. The first is from Genesis chapter 28, story of Jacob's ladder. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he passed the night there. He took a rock and used it for a headrest and lay down to sleep there. During the night, he had a dream. There was a ladder standing on the ground with its top reaching to heaven, and messengers of God were going up and coming down the ladder. God stood beside him saying, I am your God, the God of Sarah and Abraham and the God of Rebekah and Isaac. Your descendants will be like the specks of dust on the ground. You will spread to the east and to the west, to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth will be blessed in you and your descendants. Know that I am with you. I will keep you safe wherever you go and bring you back to this land. I will not leave you before I have done all that I have promised you. Then Jacob woke and said, Truly, God is in this place, and I never knew it. He was filled with wonder and said, How awe-inspiring this place is. This is nothing less than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Jacob rose early the next morning and took the stone he had used as a headrest and set it up as a monument and anointed it with oil. Jacob named the place Bethel, House of God, though before that the town was known as Luz. Jacob then made this vow. If you go with me and keep me safe on this journey which I am making, and give me bread to eat and clothes to wear, and if I return home safely to my parents' house, you will be my God. 
This stone that I have set up as a memorial pillar will be a place of worship, and I promise to give you one-tenth of everything you give me. And our second reading from 1 Thessalonians, Paul wrote these words. Live in peace with each other. We urge you, sisters and brothers, to warn the idlers, cheer up the faint-hearted, support the weak, and be patient with everyone. Make sure that no one repays one evil with another. Always seek what is good for each other and for all people. Rejoice always, pray constantly, and give thanks for everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Don't stifle the spirit, don't despise the prophetic gift. Test everything and accept only what is good. May these words comfort, encourage, and challenge us. Thanks be to God. So on the Sunday before Thanksgiving, this great national feast that we're about to celebrate, uh, the question that we ask is, um, so for what are you thankful? For who are you thankful? And what are you grateful? And is giving thanks and being grateful the same thing, or are they different? Are they somehow related? How does that work? For me, I think it's important, as we celebrate the 400th anniversary of the first Thanksgiving, that we take a moment to reflect more deeply on what is this thing called Thanksgiving, and, and, and how does that relate to gratitude? And would the world be a lot more healthier if we understood the similarity, the relationship, and the difference between those two things? 400 years. You know, I think it's important for us to remember that first Thanksgiving was celebrated after experiencing a really challenging year of hardship. When the people gathered, they gave thanks for those who did manage to survive by the grace of God. And because of the many gifts of wisdom from the elders of the people of the Wampanoag who helped them to navigate this strange time in this very strange year. And for that, they gave thanks. But what's the difference between giving thanks in living in gratitude. For me, they are related. Thanksgiving is something that we do. It's something that we offer. When there's a gift, when somebody actually gives you some sort of an, an, an unexpected blessing. Maybe it's time over coffee or, or, or tea, or maybe it's a present, or maybe it's just a smile or something that makes you pause for a moment because you've just experienced somebody being a little more humane vision of humanity. Those are the things for which we give thanks. But I think that, that giving thanks is a practice. It is the kind of activities that we do, that when we do them over and over and over and over again, like any good practice, helps us to put ourselves on a journey that leads to a whole new way of being and seeing and living more deeply. It's a lifelong journey that helps us open ourselves up to be in deeper, more authentic relationship with who we are and whose we are and ultimately who we are called to be. The, the difference between gratitude and thanksgiving for me comes into stark contrast um, through an experience that I had eight years ago when I first moved up to Canada. It was um, the week before the Canadian Thanksgiving, and Toby had helped me move up, but then he went back to Chicago for another six months. But shortly after arriving, it was the night before the Canadian Thanksgiving, and like, I barely had time to unpack anything, let alone like, meet or greet any of the neighbors. And yet, there in that small little apartment, there was a knock on the door. And I opened it up, and there's 30-something, mother of two, who lives right next door, and, and she's inviting me to come to their family gathering the 
next day. She said, you know, we're going to be gathering in the afternoon, and there's plenty of room, and we know that you just arrived, and we would like you to join us. And I, of course, instantly said, what? Well, thanks. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. However, however, the church that I'm at, I'm going to be at, at church all day because we have a Thanksgiving feast that we are planning because we have a large ministry to refugees and asylum seekers and newcomers, to the LGBT community, and to all kinds of people who otherwise would have no place to celebrate this great feast. So, so thank you. And so she turned, we're about to go away, and she said, well, maybe another time. I said, yeah, maybe when my spouse arrives. And she said, well, that would be great. And then she turned to leave, and I'm about to close the door, and she turns around and she says, by the way, what, what church is that? And I explain, and she goes on her way. In the letter to the church in Thessalonica, the Apostle Paul explains. I believe he gives a whole list of things. They're not rules or commands or demands. They are practices to help the people of his day, and I believe our day too, to help us to grow deeper in that kind of relationship with this God who is love, God in Christ, who comes to us in the power of the Holy Spirit. They are practices that he gives because he knows that it's going to be challenging for us to live in this new way. Pray always. Give thanks in all things. Do good. Encourage one another. He's giving them practices how to be this kind of people who live differently from the fear-filled world of their day and of ours too. And so later that day, I go to church. I get there about 10 a.m. The deacons are in the kitchen, and they're cooking up the turkeys and the stuffing. And in all morning, people from the congregation are stopping by. People who are on their way to their own celebrations. Some to set up the tables and some to, to set out the, the, the plates. Some people are dropping by an extra dessert, a loaf of bread, whatever. With, with literally no coordination, the meal just magically appears. It's amazing. There are all kinds of sides and foods and, and, and all kinds of things people giving out of gratefulness and thanksgiving to make this great feast happen. And so we, we set the tables, we have the feast, the room is filled with all kinds of people sharing stories. Neighbors and strangers, newcomers, sharing stories. People getting to meet one another for the very, very first time. Sitting there. So, some people had just, just arrived in the country just weeks before. Some maybe a year or two. When we're done with the meal, we move, move the tables to the side, we, we pick things up, and we put the chairs in a big circle. And there are like 60 of us who start sharing. But what is it that we are thankful? Brother David Stenel Roth, he is a 20th century mystic. And he helps to draw out the difference between giving things in finding our way to live in gratitude. He said, give thanks for all things. That is a really hard thing to do. In fact, he says, we shouldn't give thanks for all things. There are challenges. And I believe, like the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul is not trying to spiritualize away all the challenging circumstances in which we find ourselves. He's not trying to forgive the abuse or when people use their, their presence and their power in order to cause violence or to hurt another. Brother David Stendhal says, no, 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 no. He says, we're not to give thanks for all things, but to find our way to have this sense of gratitude, to give thanks in and through all things. Even in the most challenging of circumstances, there's something for us to learn. What does this circumstance tell me about who I am? What are my values? How might I use my gifts and presence to make the world a better place? Whose am I? And who am I? And who are we called to be? He says, no. Don't give thanks or have gratitude for all things. 
but find our way to have gratitude in order that we can live and be differently. Which, for me, brings us back to the story of our friend, Jacob. Remember, a few weeks ago, we talked about Jacob. We talked about that night when he wrestled with God and how he finally was able to overcome these ghosts from the past that continued to haunt him. Well, we, we pick up the story actually years earlier, right after he's running away in fear of his life from his brother. And, and he struggles through the night, and he has this dream, this, this, this ladder, and he sees the messengers and the angels of God going between earth and heaven. And all of a sudden, he wakes up and he realizes, oh my gosh, that God is in this place. And it is from that moment forward, when he wakes up, he does what? He, he gives thanks. It is the beginning of the end that will lead to the beginning of a whole new beginning. Thanksgiving is the beginning of the journey that leads us deeper. And as we practice it, we ultimately find our way into living with grace and hope and love and gratitude. He wakes up and he builds this altar to this God who is love. And, and, and he says, I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful. And then he says, what? If, if you do this, then blah, blah, blah. <laughs> if. Which is why I think that, that, that giving thanks needs to be a practice because it leads us on this journey that leads us into a whole deeper way of living. God is not some sort of a cosmic vending machine in the sky. Life doesn't work that way. Giving thanks is not something that we do if because of this, then that. Giving thanks is something we need to do because it is this joyful, overwhelming feeling that we have deep down inside. Brother David, who, who lived in Vienna at the time when Hitler invaded and learned the difference as a teenager between thanksgiving and gratitude, lived through some really challenging and difficult circumstances that helped open up his life and open up his, his life, eyes. Because of all the loss that he experienced, because of the fear that he experienced, he still remained grounded to this God who is love. He still found the way to have hope and to have healing despite all of the fear and the violence that he was experiencing there. He said, gratitude, gratitude is, is like this feeling that you have deep, deep down inside. It's not something that you do. Giving thanks is the practice that we, we inspire and we choose to do or not to do. Like, like when I met that lady at the front door who gave me that invitation, right? Gratitude is something that bubbles up deep down from, from, from our inner life, from the inside. It is a way of being grounded to the ground of our being, despite what is happening all around us. He says it is this sense and this feeling of overwhelming joy, of knowing of who we are, that we are loved, that we belong, and that we have a purpose in God's greater, ever unfolding story. And he said, you feel that sense of gratitude. And, and he said, you know what? Oftentimes what happens is the voices of the world, this sense of fear, will come alongside and say, no, no, no. No, no, no. I think that's what happens with, with Jacob uh, 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 on that journey. And it takes him almost a lifetime before he finally wrestles down with God and wrestles with all that stuff inside before he moves from this, if you do this, then I'll be grateful and thankful to living with this deeper sense of attitude that is more than just gratitude. And so... We are there in the social hall in this big, big circle. And, and, and just before we, we, we finish going around the circle and sharing what it is for which we are thankful, my neighbor comes and she brings one more round of cookies that we pass around that big circle in the social hall. 
And, 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 and even though he said, you know, we, we want people to you know, share really briefly what it is that the great people are thankful for, all of a sudden, the, this refugee, this, this newly arrived individual, he rises up and he stands in the circle and he says, you know, and he starts to tell his story. He gives his name and the country that he's from. And he says, he says um, I used to be um, very high up in the government in my country. And he said, I was really well paid and I had a lot of money and all of that money was there in order to help protect me. He said, but then one of my rivals, one of my rivals called the police and they said that I was using my position to help LGBTQ people. In his, in his country, in his country, as with like 75 other countries today in the world, you could be arrested, persecuted, and in some countries even put to death for identifying as LGBTQ, and in his country, for helping them or associating with them too. He says, and so one of my political rivals, they, they called the police, and they said that I was using my position and my power and my authority in order to protect LGBTQ people. And he said, I, I, I got a phone call from, from one of my friends who, who put me wise that this was about to go on just in time because I looked out the window and I saw the police cruisers drive up on the outside and block the entrances. He said, I ran, I fled that day with the clothes on my back and nothing else. He left from a side window out of the bathroom. He had a friend who got into his brother, and his brother drove him to the border. He said both of them were ultimately arrested. And he stood there with tears coming down his eyes. And every one of us, like you can hear this pain drop as he tells this incredible story. And he says, today I am grateful. Having lost everything, having come within an inch of losing his life. He said, because of this community and because of this people, you were help, you were able to help get me to freedom and help me find safety. And he said, I know that if we had this kind of gathering in my country, that there would be people standing outside, outside the doors, ready to beat us up. Or do something even worse. Arrest us. Or maybe even kill us. He wasn't just grateful. He wasn't just thankful. He was incredibly grateful. Having lived that challenging journey. As part of his life. And, and, and later on. As we're cleaning up the tables. There was a congregant. who She came to me and she said. You know. She said, for years I've heard about this ministry and we've given money to support this ministry and, and we've given our time to support this ministry and we've heard this about the refugees and that about the refugees. Today for the first time when I actually sat down and I actually met somebody and I heard their story and she said, oh my goodness, I think that this day has completely changed my life. I'm amazingly thankful for this time. And then she paused and she stopped. And she said, no, I'm incredibly grateful. Gratitude is the power for us to be grounded to the ground of our being. To give thankful in each moment and for each moment, despite the circumstances, the grief, the loss, the suffering, the challenges that we face, knowing that our God is the God of love, and that each and every one of us has a part in that ever unfolding story. May you have a happy and blessed day. Amen. Amen. We plow the fields and scatter the good seed on the land. But it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. He sends the snow in winter.
winter, the warmth to swell the grain. The breezes and the sunshine and soft refreshing rain. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord, for all his love. My friends, as you prepare to head out into the world, especially in this week, this week that we celebrate Thanksgiving, as we gather together, may we gather together safely. May you have a joyful feast, whatever that feast may look like. And may you pause for a moment to give thanks and to find ways to be grateful. Grateful for this great creation, this world that God has made. Grateful for the people with whom you are in relationship and in community. Grateful for this God of love who commits to be with us wherever we are on our journey. Let us go and let us be the church. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.